can't help it. I tried to be normal, but guys, don't ask me. <laughs> don't ask for impossible. I can't. I can't. But anyway, I'm so happy to be back as always. What, what day is today? The, the 8th? The 10th? The 8th. The, the 8th, 2011. And I'm, I'm wearing hot pink. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. Okay, <laughs> Katerina Lankova. My beautiful sponsor, fashion designer, drop dead gorgeous woman. I say hi to you and to all my sponsors. D'Amico's, the best Italian specialties. Madonna's Brothers Bakery. Caterina Lancova, I already said it. Oh, and my new sponsor. Yeah, my new sponsor. <coughs> Fluff and Stuff by Quinton Bailey, right? Did you brother it? I got it right. Okay, so now we are going to talk with our beautiful Drop dead gorgeous men. I'm not trying to pick you out though. I know you guys got your girls. They don't have to get jealous. I'm no threat to anybody, okay? Mr. Francisco Solorsano, artistic director of the Barefoot Theater Company. Yes. I said it right, right? You did. Yes. Hello. And, and Joseph Zosa. Souza. Souza. <laughs> you see, we're going to take a whole hour just to do the I know, don't worry about it. Joseph Souza. Yeah. I got it right? You did. You guys are promoting your new production. Yeah. Right? Which is? It's Joseph Souza's Teeth of the Sun. Teeth of the Sun. So we want to talk about that, how you guys met, why you're bringing the play to the Barefoot Theatre Company. I'm so glad you're back, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be back. I'm so I'm glad. I'm having so much fun. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm a, I understand that I'm a huge fan of the Barefoot Theatre Company. These guys are so amazing. I went to see them when, how long ago when we went to uh, see them? Uh, what was that, four years, three years ago? Oh, that long ago? Yeah. Are we that old? Uh, no. No. <laughs> I went to see the Dog Day Afternoon. Of course, Mr. Pacino's movie. Oh, we know Pacino, but he did a hell of a job. Baby, you you rocked that stage. Thank you. I, I went to see that play how many times? Three times. Four? Five? Four times? times? <laughs> yeah, I just loved it. Your guys are terrific. You're taking risk in your productions. You're amazing. You're beautiful. You have great actors always. It's a great ensemble. So let's talk about how you guys met and how you brought this production to okay. the uh, Barefoot. Well, first of all, Joseph is a company member. He's an ensemble member of the Barefoot Theater Company. Since when? Since 2009. Yeah. Okay. And he's also a graduate of the Brooklyn College uh, Theater Department where four, all four founders graduated from. Okay. So um, that, that's the mutual thing mm -hmm. right off the bat. And we found his play from another company member who asked me to take a look at it and read it. And I saw his showcase, so I knew of him. I knew he was around. I read the play. I liked it a lot. I think we bumped into each other in the street outside the school. Well, it was at, during Dog Day. Uh, Next was running in rap. Oh, right, it was a workshop yeah, of Dog so Day. Yeah. It was during Dog Day that you were handed the script. It was like four years ago. Yeah. Okay. So pretty much, because I, I was reading the script last night. I didn't finish it. I didn't have a time. But Wait I got for the show. It. Wait for the show. I, yeah. yeah I'm not, I, it was like, I liked how you grabbed you know, the reader, the audience, right from the beginning. You really did. First Thank line. You. You, room. Is something going on? Is something happening? Yeah. You know, so I'm just wondering how close is this play to your real life? How close is it? Um, well, the brothers in the play are Jewish. Yes. Uh, Jacob. Jacob and Sam. Sam, yeah. And I myself am not Jewish, although I play one of the brothers in the play, but my fiance, Jessica Langer, uh, I met her about five years ago. We started dating. And she's an actor as well. She's an actress as well. Okay. And uh, she's also a company member. She's also she's a company, company member. Yeah. Okay. And so Why is she not here? <laughs> she's in California. She will okay, be. She'll be that's here. That's nice as hell. Oh, come on, I was waiting for her. You telling me you're getting married? Yeah. Oh man. I can't. Boom. Did I invite her to the wedding? Of course. You of see, course. Of it's course. In the mail. I, I stop you again. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. So. So, anyways, I met her when we started dating. Her grandma is a Holocaust survivor. She's this beautiful woman named Esther Wasserman, and uh, hearing her stories of survival and how, being from the generation of of the Holocaust survivors, how it affects what family means for Jessica, her generation. I started to think about this play and what it means if one brother becomes really Jewish in the name of preserving the family heritage and the other brother is more of a secular, normal, sort of unreligious person and how being really, becoming orthodox, could how can that disrupt the balance of the family? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's, it's very interesting because every time that I read about brothers and sisters, I mean, relationships are so hard, you mm -hmm. know, and right. it's like, it's compelling. Yeah. I'm very close to my brother and my sister. I have a twin sister, uh, but I'm, I was reading the script and I said, "This is, you know, it, it, it really, it's really engaging." Well, it's a universal theme because it's yes. the, whole, the, the idea of family, yes. you know, and the, yes. the family possibly breaking apart or bringing family back together again. Yes, yeah. yes. What's the objective with this play? What do you want? As far as where I want the play to go? Yes. Um, you know, I think I, I wanted to be, we, we did it in Portland, Oregon. Yes. And it won Best Any Play. Any one Best Play. Best yes, I read that. Yeah. And so, and it was great doing it there, but it was, Portland was a great 
location to grow it and to uh, workshop it, so, so to speak, um, develop it. But it, ultimately, this play belongs in New York because it's about these brothers in Midwood, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. uh, th th I set the play where we went to school at Brooklyn College. And uh, it's really for like a, a multicultural audience because the brothers are only half Jewish and half Greek. And, it's, and then there's a pregnant girlfriend in it who's Catholic. And it's sort of like about how these mashup of characters all sort of run into each other surrounding this one brother who's changed his life around and become orthodox, which means he now follows a new set of principles. I noticed that religion is 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 it's a subject there yeah. Yeah. you know the barefoot i mean what yeah. kind of what 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 where are you standing in terms of religion because it's a delicate subject you know like politics religion is things that sometimes people they don't like to talk yeah. about yeah. how well I mean, that's i think for barefoot that's that's one of the things that we've always wanted to uh, take risk on is to present works that involve subject matters that people don't want to talk about or or afraid to talk about you right. know, religion, uh, politics, mm -hmm. you know, doing a lot of Israel Horowitz's works, dealing with a lot of yes. family issues and politics, most recently his works, uh, you know, about the Mideast mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. So I think this, this play, uh, in a lot of ways, has a lot of everything that we've been doing the past 12 years. Right. You know, that universal theme of family, religion, mm -hmm. the, you know, there are some small political things going on there, actually. Yeah, I mean, the, the brother wants to go to Israel and sort of join the military and and really, but for me, the play isn't so much about religion as someone trying to find the easiest way to change their identity. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much a play for me about religion, although there's a lot about it, about Orthodox Judaism, but it's about, he, he's rebelling against this father he had who, who, who was abusive and an alcoholic and, and, it's, and who was Greek. And so his way of saying, I don't like you, Dad, I disapprove of you, is by becoming only the mom side of the family, which is Jewish. So yeah. he reinvents himself as strictly Jewish, but it's, it's more about rebelling against his father and saying, I'm a different person now. I used to be a bad person, but now I'm a good person because I have religion. Right. But he ha the play is, starts out when he has to actually make the personal growth okay. that can't be found by just having a conversion. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. now, in terms of casting the play, how does it work, Frank? You call the shots? Well, Big time. <laughs> you don't want to see this I guy casting around. He doesn't, he doesn't want to brag, but, but you know, it, yeah, I wanted to ask you, I mean, you, <coughs> I, I tell you, uh, I tell you, I don't know how, how young you are. What, 20 what? You were what, born in 1982? <laughs> I, 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 yeah, yeah, I wish. I don't know. You are <laughs> too young to be the artistic director, honestly, at the Barefoot Theatre Company. How no. you manage? How do you do it? Do you, you get you overwhelmed? Of course, uh, you know, uh, all the time, but yeah, yeah. lots of coffee, <laughs> lots yeah, of six, coffee. Time, six times a day. Um, oh, Frank, I can uh, see it in your eyes. You should be well, sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts. Ooh, I just yeah. had some espresso here that Chuck made for me. You just did, I know, I know, I know. Um, yeah, you, we, we surround ourselves with people who want to, who have, you know, uh, same ideas right. and same passion, yes. you know, same drive to make the work happen. And I think, it's, you know, talking about casting specifically, this show was the first time that it took us that long to cast, which went over five days and meetings even over Skype when Joe was in California. He flew in at one point, he was here for casting. Uh -huh. And we, I think we were at the point, being 12 years old now, where we want to get it right. 100% yeah, right, because we've learned so much. But the company's been growing a lot, too. Oh, of, co of course, yeah. And with casting, what was exciting is that we did, it wasn't just myself and Victoria, uh, you know, managing director of the company, or our new company manager. Victoria, where is she? Uh, Again, <laughs> where are the ladies? She, yes. That's besides the point. Ooh, my hair's sticking out like that. <laughs> okay, I fix it. Let's go back to this beautiful, drop-dead gorgeous man, Gloria Messer. <laughs> there you go. Men, so, um, yes. We, uh, you know, we relied a lot of uh, on Joe and what his his goals were ultimately for the play and the direction of the play and our current director Nicole Heron. So it was really a collaborative effort, you know, with casting. Yes. The other cast member, Will Allen, is also an ensemble member. Uh -huh. And then we also have Shayna Padovano, who's worked with us before. Uh -huh. And the director of the play? The director of the play is Nicole Harris. Nicole she's Harris, she, who's, I didn't know she's a member of uh, the actor Studio PD unit. Yes, yeah, yeah. At she, the actor mm -hmm. Studio, which is great. Yeah, it's she's great, excellent. Great, great, great. Yeah, she's, uh, she's one of the co-founders, too, of the company. And, uh, and she has two films in the works, right? I, I read Yep, she's, she's working on a documentary, and she does some short films as well. Yeah, yeah. Why she's not here either? Yeah. I keep missing we everybody. We try to get her here. I can't I even we try to get her here. Mind. She's camera shy. Yeah, she's camera shy. I don't believe that. I saw her picture. She looks beautiful. She looks very tough too. Pretty. <laughs> what is do you she, think? Is you she think pretty? She's tough? Is she tough? 
Yes. Uh, she, I can she see, She right? doesn't suffer fools. Uh -huh. I'll say that about her. Let's put it that way. So what She's about, a terrific director. She's doing I can see job. that. What about, you see, now you're blushing a little bit, Joseph. That's okay. That's okay. I'm asking I'm you. Blushing. Are you blushing? She doesn't care. I'm blushing too. Let me fix my hair. Okay, now. You wrote the play. How do you step one step backwards and say, okay, I'm, I'm just acting. I'm doing my job. I'm going to let this woman just direct the play. Do you have any problem Put it your... <coughs> Mind immune on silence and say, okay, I'm just going to be the actor. Now, just it's concentrate. A, it's, it can be acting. difficult, but it really requires a lot of trust in the director, which okay. I have with Nicole. I mean, I. But I, it was somebody else directing the play. In the beginning. We, direct, we had another director, Jason Zimler, who did a terrific job in Portland. Okay, I and see. And he did a great job, and now we're doing it with Nicole. And a lot of times when, when we're in rehearsal, if the playwright voice in my head starts to speak up. What do you do when that happens? I don't have to do anything because Nicole's already. 10 steps ahead of me and she's already addressing it. So I can really just be there as an actor. And I feel like as a writer, it, uh, being a writer and actor, it's not that different. I'm just a dramatist. I just created a world that we can all come inside and make real, but I don't have any more authority over it than the other creative people in the room. If they say it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So we're all working together. Okay. So there's no sense of like, I'm the playwright, I'm the boss, or no, right. it, we just work working to make it as believable and strong as possible. Because I said to Austin Pedalton, and I said it before, that Edward Albee says that a good director is somebody who's able to, how can I explain it? You're a good director if you can translate those words. Mm -hmm. and just bring them on stage the way they are. Yeah. With how you, all the behavior and all yeah. the work, you have to be able to let the playwright speak to you. Right. And let him, you know, do, you know, his job. Yeah, as a Sometimes playwright. Sometimes your yeah. ego gets in the way and <clears throat> it doesn't allow to well, get, I, you I, know. I think that's, I, you, oh, we're really lucky, uh, you know, to have such a close family with Barefoot. For example, Jason Zimbler is also a company member. So it's, we, yes. we've been keeping it very close knit. We've worked together, a bunch of us have worked together for years. So we know how we work. Yes. You, we, you know, we know how to push each other's buttons Do if we need to. Do you fight with each other? Not. We don't, but we, you Are know. Are you sure, Frank? I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't buy that. I don't buy it. You've got to give me an interesting answer. I'm watching you guys now. Oh, is that, is that what you want? You want conflict? Yeah, yeah you look yeah. Yeah. Like, well, we yeah, still I have another week, two weeks of rehearsal <laughs> yeah, left, so the I'm fights sure. are about to there's plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tech week. We'll have tech week to you get, But you get over. it. I mean, how, I mean, you guys know each other, but there's, when, when adversity and obstacles come around, <laughs> what do you do? Well, I think that's what it takes to become a Barefoot member is when we all realize we have the same goals, which is to tell the best story. So whenever there is adversity, it, it's always resolved because we ultimately want the same thing, which is for the story to be told and for the audience. We put Barefoot puts the audience first. We want them. We want you know. We're so thankful to anyone that comes and sees the show. And yeah. It, yeah. theater is such a sacred process. That anyone is there, we want to share that. So that's our goal. So any argument that comes up or disagreement. We usually find the common ground that what's best for the show, what's best for the story, mm -hmm. and that solves it. Yeah, and we do find definitely that there's an, a, a nice absence of ego because nice. it's not about our individual giving of the piece. Right. It's about how it's going to work right. for the audience. Yeah. Because the absence of ego is so yeah. enticing. It's so beautiful. It, I think that it's, it's uh, you know, when I see, I you know, I don't know, when I just see great art, talent and great artists and very small ego, it's, it, it's such a big turn on. Okay, I'm not getting yeah. too passionate, right? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, no, proper, right? This, yeah. is, this is proper. <clears throat> okay, this is something that you're looking for to be inspired and to be, yeah. And your productions are so risky. They're so courageous. Yeah. And your your actors are so good, Frank. I tell you, that dog day afternoon it keeps coming back to my mind. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. such a great play. Well, what makes me really proud of this piece is um, it has that. And it's the first time I'm solely producing. I'm not acting in it. Do you have and time so, to act? Or because you're producing all the time, you're I, busy I, I now? Do. No, I do. No, I do. I, I'm in another show at the moment. But I, I'm able to produce this show and be just as proud as if I was the lead and had that much passion and dedication to it. Not How? just because of the whole company, but because of the, the, the play itself, the performances um, you know, that are coming along so far, and the direction. You didn't tell me your age. You notice that? Do you I am that good, Frank. <laughs> I said, wait a second. I asked him, how old is he? We just kept talking and we lost it. Yeah. Right? You see We're how good he is? We're going around circles. We're going around circles? I mean, yeah. you're young, Frank. I'm, I'm, I, honestly, you're yeah. too young. And this is a big responsibility. But like Al Pacino says, great talent. 